All right, hey folks, good afternoon. Daniel Karzuski here with you from Salvation Baptist Discipleship Ministries, live from Washington, D.C., with the final episode, episode number seven, on the armor of God and the weapons of God. And this is going to be the final episode here in this little mini series that we've been doing on these subjects. And in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, it says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, colon, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And so the final weapon in the arsenal of God that we've been learning about here now for several weeks is prayer. I know it sounds cliche, but it's clear as day in God's word. And in verse 18, it says, praying always with all prayer. So pray always with all prayer. It's it's almost like he's, he's repeating himself for a purpose because he's saying that prayer is doubly important. And in verse 17, we saw that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. So how do you fight the enemy? How do you fight the devil? How do you fight your enemy? Oftentimes, we as Christians, we don't necessarily make other people our enemy, but other people make us their enemy. And that, that's oftentimes the case because people hate God. And that's okay. There's going to be those people out there. And certainly there's times in our lives when we've not walked with God or before when we were lost. So what you do is you pray. You pray always with prayer, with supplication in the spirit that's key because you can obviously insinuation here you can pray not in the spirit and if you're praying not in the spirit you're just saying words you're not accomplishing anything and the way to defeat the devil is to go to the throne room of heaven to ask god or the throne room of grace and go there before it boldly so that way what we may receive help and mercy and grace in time of need so that way we can get our prayers answered god wants to hear from us why? Because he wants to see us go back up a few verses. He wants to see us living in faith. He wants to see us put the shield of faith on. He wants to know that we have that helmet of salvation on. That when we're praying in God's word, in God's way, and in God's will, and in God's time, that we're speaking with his truth in mind. That we're praying for the will of God to be accomplished and not our will. Lord, your will be done, not thine. Because if it was our will... Certainly, it, you know, it would be all about our fleshly desires. But if we knew the will of God, if we knew what God knew, we would do what God knows. And a lot of times somebody asked me the other day, what's the will? How do I know the will of God? What's the will of God for my life? It's very simple. And again, it sounds cliche, but it's not. It's just God's word. It's, it's God's instruction. He doesn't tell us what to do in every little single circumstance, but through conviction consciousness sake discernment through what we know scripture tells us to do in in using the fruits of the spirit and in using our spiritual gifts we can know exactly how to operate in any given circumstance but the will of god is found in the word of god and that is oftentimes where god calls people so people wonder what the call of god is for their life how do i know the call of god how do i know the will of god it's all simple it's found in the word of god and again to defeat the enemy pray Pray in the Spirit. Watch. That's another That's another tool here. Oftentimes people want to do, 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 but God just says we're supposed to watch. We're supposed to watch with all perseverance. Perseverance means to um, take up a resiliency. We're supposed to persevere in supplication. What is that? To ask. To ask God in faith for the saints. And we're all saints, us who are saved. Yes, we're sinners saved by grace, but we're also saints. Why? Why are we praying? So that way we can defeat the enemy. So that way Paul wanted right here, he wanted he wanted an utterance. He wanted to be able to open his mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. What's the mystery of the gospel? Love. It's to love your neighbor as yourself. Oftentimes, sometimes more than yourself. If we love people and we're trying to reach them, what does God want us to do? How do you spell love? You spell time and energy. And oftentimes money. 
Because if you love your spouse, your wife, your, your children, your family, your mom, your dad, whoever, your friends, you're going to give them time. You're going to give them your energy. You're going to spend time and energy with them. You're going to expel money for gifts, for things to do with them. But so oftentimes we just leave the lost cast aside and we say, ah, you know, we brush at them as if they're less. That should never be the case. God loved them too, just enough, just like he saved you and me. And so he wants you to spend your time, your energy, your love, and your money towards them. And that's what we're supposed to do. That's the mystery of the gospel. And again, so that way he could speak boldly as he ought to speak. And so that is the final weapon, is prayer. If there is demonic possession, if there is somebody that is out of their right mind, if there is a troubling circumstance, a difficulty at work, I mean, think about it. even in our country, how much more things could we pray for every single day? I see wickedness all the time. Lord, pray that you keep the evil one away from everyone, from those who are saved, from those who are lost. Lord, draw all men to you. That's what your word says. Lord, if you be lifted up, you will draw all men to you. So we need to pray for our friends who are lost. We need to pray for our friends who are saved. We need to pray for safety. We need to pray for peace. We need to pray for strength. We need to pray for God to enable us, imbue us, and endow us with all his almighty power from all his angels and legions of, of, of angel hosts of armies. We need the whole power of God. We need the whole gospel of God. We need the whole armor of God. We need all the weapons of God. We need the arsenal. Again, reminder though, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. We are fighting against principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places and darkness in the enemy. The enemy has blinded the minds of this generation and we are praying that we will be light to open those eyes and to open those minds and to be a blessing unto this nation and forevermore until Jesus Christ comes back. And so with that, folks, i leave you. That is the armor of God, the weapons of God. And this has been a really, really, really fun and exciting short seven-part ser mini-series. If you have any questions about any of this, please comment, like, subscribe, leave us a message, leave us a note. We'd love to hear from you. Send us an email. Give us a call. If there's anything that we can do for you from Salvation Baptist Discipleship Ministries, you let us know. Again, this is Daniel Karzuski signing off here live in Washington, D.C. And again, God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Bye.